Welcome to Think Tech Friday, part of the Think Tech Radio series on AM 760 KGU, broadcasting across the islands and raising public awareness in Hawaii. Now, here's your host, Jay Fidel. Okay, we're here, we're live, we're at Think Tech. It's Friday. We are delighted to be talking about new laws regarding same sex marriage with retired Justice Stephen H. Levinson and Alan Spector. And we're going to discuss all the things you need to know, want to know about same-sex marriage. And Hawaii is a very important place for that because Justice Levinson was the guy that wrote the watershed case that had an effect around the world. And we're going to talk about that tonight. So, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Justice Levinson. Good to be here. Alan. Same, same for me. Glad okay, to be great. here. Okay, great. You guys, thank you for being here. This is a, a wonderful discussion. So tell me, what is same-sex marriage? Somebody needs to define it for everybody, and how does it differ from civil union and all the other partnerships that are out there? Well, actually, I prefer to use the term just marriage. Okay, or fine. marriage for same-sex couples, right. because um, marriage for same-sex couples is no different than marriage for opposite-sex couples. It's a marriage of two people in love who decide to pledge their lives to each other, to form a family, uh, to, to have mutual support, caring. Uh, you know, the ma marriage for gay couples or, or same-sex couples is really the same thing as marriage for opposite-sex couples. People marry because they're in love. Um, here in Hawaii, and, and in many states uh, and countries, although I'll, I'll stick to the United States, we do have marriage for same-sex couples. Um, those states are Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, Maryland, Washington, D.C., uh, and Washington State. This is these are states where same-sex marriage Iowa. are recognized. You can mm -hmm. go there, mm -hmm. uh, you can be married there, mm -hmm. and they will also recognize uh, marriages from that are performed mm -hmm. in other states. Well, right. Maryland and Washington, I think, as of early January 2013, when yep. the law becomes effective. Well, I think that's a that's an interesting point because all of this is fairly recent. I mean, all of this is in the last, I want to say 10 years, but maybe you'll say 15, uh, that this really wasn't the law in any of those places, say 15 years ago or even 10. Well, and a lot of it isn't happening until right now, yeah. right now. Well, the, f the first state to pass full marriage equality for same-sex couples was Massachusetts, and that was based on a 2003 court ruling, and then it was implemented in 2004. So it is very recent. So uh, And internationally, Oh. 2001, as I understand it, I, I, I think it was Denmark. No, the Netherlands. Or the Netherlands. The Netherlands was the first country in 2001. Currently, um, I'm probably forgetting some of the countries, but certainly we have full marriage equality in Canada, Spain, um, Portugal, Portugal, um, Mexico. Mexico City. Well, yeah, but, but Part, the, parts of Mexico, not well, all. Right. Well, Sometimes it's just one province and not the others. Well, right? it's it's. I think in two states in Mexico, one or two, but the Mexican Supreme Court recently ordered that it has to be recognized everywhere. Oh, so I, I consider so that Argentina, Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark, Sweden, South, Norway, South Africa, South Africa, South Africa. Yes. By legislation. Yeah. Uh, the, the uh, I mean, when when uh, same-sex marriage was legislated in Spain, uh, being a Catholic country, the the Roman Catholic Church became quite upset. Uh, but uh, happened anyway. It happened anyway. It really shows you how fast the world is moving, and I and I would guess you guys could tell me uh, that that. It's, it's all of this in the international scene is also fairly recent. Yeah, the first, the first country in the world to pass some type of illegal recognition for same-sex couples was Denmark, and I believe that was 1989. I could be off a year, it might have been 88, um, and they called it registered partnership. So that actually brings me back to the other part of your question. You asked me about other types of civil union or partnership laws. Uh, here in Hawaii, we do have a civil union law that was passed in 2011 and went into effect in 2012. And in the rest of the country, there are other states that have similar laws. Uh, we sometimes think of them as marriage without the name. Uh, 
you have uh, domestic partnership laws in uh, California, Nevada, uh, civil union in New Jersey, Illinois, Delaware, Rhode Island, Hawaii. So uh, it is, uh, th there's other types of legal statuses, but they're not the same as marriage. They were compromise laws that came into effect um, in Vermont in the year 2000 was the first state to pass such a law. Uh, they were, they're very much designed as band-aids essentially, to try to expand legal rights to same-sex couples until the time comes that we can achieve full marriage equality. So let me, let me get this straight. I mean, and you can do this judicially, am I right? You can say that, that the, the, right of, um, the right to marry includes the right to marry same-sex as well as different sex. You can say that judicially and therefore create a same-sex state judicially without a statute? You, you can say that judicially um, if the courts of the state uh, interpret their state's constitution um, to allow it, to allow it, mm -hmm. and so uh, uh, and not, and not merely to allow it, but to prohibit discrimination against same-sex couples. Okay. Yeah. So that's or, what happened in Massachusetts and right, Iowa and, that, and California and okay. Connecticut. Okay. And what would have happened in Hawaii had the Hawaii Constitution not been amended in response to the Supreme Court's decision. I, I want to cover that. So, but also you could do it by legislation. A, a lot of these states that you mentioned, they just passed a bill and the bill allowed for same-sex yeah, marriage. Most of those states that passed it legislatively first passed either a civil union law or a domestic partnership law several years prior right. and then upgraded. Okay, the, and here's the question. Well, there's a third route actually, yeah. Jay. Yes. Um, and that's the route that, that Maine and Maryland and Washington State recently took. I think in each of the states there had been legislative action uh, recognizing or opening marriage up to same-sex couples but then the, the question was put to the electorate. Um, and for the first time on November 6th, uh, the, the voters in Maine, Maryland, and Washington State um, voted to approve same-sex marriage. So that really is by way of, of a direct democratic process the representative process would be through the legislature and uh, the judicial route uh, happens when the legislature doesn't act uh, and the state's constitution um, is such that not to make marriage available to same-sex couples would violate some provision such as the state's equal protection clause. So is it fair to say that we, we are in, involved in a global trend here? Uh, I, there, I this is happening not only in the U.S., across the U.S., in a lot of states in the U.S., but also it's happening in Europe. It's happening in a lot of places, and it's happening more every year. It's, it's a, a growing phenomenon, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, absolutely, and especially in the past five years. It's been exponential. It's been an explosion. Uh, when we uh, introduced even a lot even five years ago, when we introduced House Bill 444, the civil unions What's bill. What's we on? Uh, oh, well, the, the, the advocates here in, Ho in Hawaii, Equality Hawaii and other um, coalition partners, mm -hmm. but, um, but when the civil union bill was introduced by Representative Blake Oshiro in January of 2009, um, at that point, the only states in the USA that had full marriage equality was um, Connecticut and Massachusetts. And earlier in the show, I think I gave you a list of nine states plus the District of, I actually I left off the District of Columbia. So currently it's nine states plus the District of Columbia. Uh, in 2009, it was two states. So that's, that's well, very well, significant. I think, I think Iowa, the Iowa decision had uh, been out, handed down by then. Came out a little bit, a few months after. So can you explain to me as a social political matter, um, what, what, what makes this popular? 
Why is this happening? Why is it happening now? Is it because of these grassroots organizations you're talking about? Uh, is it a change in public opinion? Uh, what's, what's the sort of larger yeah. process? Well, there has been a, a dramatic change in public opinion over the past few years. I mean, very, very significant. For a, a long time, public opinion was very, very much about 60% uh, of the public was opposed to marriage for same-sex couples. Um, and even when we began uh, in 2009 advocating for House Bill 444, even at that point, we still had about 60% of the public opposed to marriage for same-sex couples, but roughly 60, 65% of the public supported civil unions, which was, was, was a strategic reason why we pursued civil unions at the time. But over the past few years, there really has been a, a very dramatic change where overall in America, if you, a, a full average, we have about 51% of the population supporting marriage equality, but that's a general overview. Yeah. When you start looking that's like at the popular vote. when you start looking <laughs> at demographics yeah. among people under 40, that it's over 60% support. Yeah. Among Democrats, it's about 60, 70 percent support. So it's a very much a generational thing. Yes, and, where the, the, and the generation that's coming up favors it more than the generations dramatically. Okay. And the other thing is, I think with each state passing marriage equality, you see more and more public support. That's the voice of Alan Spector. I, I, is it fair to call you a same-sex marriage activist? Is that fair? Advocate. What, okay, whatever, advocate. whatever term, I'm a okay. happily married a gay man <laughs> married to my husband. Okay, and I've been enough. advocating for uh, marriage equality for about 12 years now. Okay, we we'll call you an advocate. That's right? fine. And uh, retired uh, Justice Steve Levinson from the Hawaii Supreme Court. And we're talking about new laws in same-sex marriage. Right now, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Stay there. You're listening to Think Tech Friday, part of the Think Tech radio series on AM 760 KGU. Now here once again is your host, Jay Fidel. We're back. We're live. We're Think Tech. We're here on a given Friday with retired Justice Stephen H. Levinson from the state Supreme Court and Alan Spector, a same-sex marriage participant and activist okay? mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, if you want to call in and ask questions or make a comment you can do that uh, you can call 296-5467 anyway what I would like to do in this quarter you guys is talk about Bear versus Lewin this is a watershed case written by Steve Levinson right here at this table you are known worldwide for this case Steve thank you for coming down thank you for participating thank you for talking about it uh, it is a remarkable decision that has historical import for sure. Um, what did it hold? Well, d tell them the circumstances too, you know. Okay. Um, the bottom line was that uh, at least when all the dust had settled uh, from the appeal, uh, a majority of the court, three out of five, um, were in agreement that Hawaii's marriage laws, to the extent that on their face they excluded um, same-sex couples from potential eligibility, uh, were presumptively unconstitutional as uh, engaging in unlawful sex discrimination in, in violation of the state's Equal Protection Clause which is more elaborate than the Equal Protection Clause that's found in the United States Constitution and specifically says uh, that the state cannot uh, deny persons equal protection of the laws on the, uh, on, the, on the basis of sex, among other things. A man and a woman appear at the marriage license desk at the Department of Health, and they're otherwise eligible uh, to marry. They receive a marriage license. Two men appear, they don't. Two women appear, they don't. That was sex discrimination. Uh, having decided that the state's marriage laws engaged in, un engaged in sex discrimination, um, the burden then shifted to the state to demonstrate that it had what's called a compelling interest in that sex discrimination and that the discrimination or the laws were sufficiently narrowly drawn as uh, not to unnecessarily abridge other rights. And so we sent the matter back to the circuit court for trial. 
and in 1996 there was a trial. Uh, it was relatively short. Uh, all of the facts were agreed to uh, by the uh, plaintiffs who were the uh, same-sex couples who had been denied marriage applications and the director of health who was the nominal defendant. That was Lewin. Jack Lewin. The, in Hawaii, the Department of Health has jurisdiction over the issuance of, of marriage licenses, so it was in his official capacity as director that he was named as a defendant. Uh, all the parties agreed to the basic facts. The, the, um, the three couples had uh, presented themselves uh, to the Department of Health, had asked for marriage uh, licenses, and were refused on the basis that it was pointless to give the marriage licenses, uh, given that they couldn't get married legally. Uh, and uh, so that was that. Uh, they then filed a lawsuit uh, challenging the constitutionality of uh, the marriage laws. Uh, initially, the circuit court um, threw the case out. Uh, after the plaintiffs had filed their complaint and, and, and Director Lewin had filed his answer, um, Lewin moved the circuit court for what's called judgment on the pleadings. And basically he said, the, the, given, I mean, even assuming that everything the plaintiffs are claiming is true, factually, there, there is no legal theory on the basis of which they can possibly win. Uh, so toss this lawsuit out, and the circuit court did. And then it came up to the Hawaii Supreme Court um, from that decision and order and judgment of the circuit court. As, as, a, as a matter of, of, uh, of uh, timing, it, it came up to the court at a, at a very pivotal moment when the personnel of the court was turning over. Two, two members of the court retired. Two new members of the court, uh, well, there were two new members of the court who just joined it. I was one. You had, you had only been on the court about a year at the time. I, right? Well, when the matter came up for oral argument, I'd been on the court for four months. Oh, no kidding. Bob Klein was the other new member, and he was the circuit court judge who had thrown the case out, <laughs> uh, so he couldn't hear it. Yeah. Uh, Justice Jimmy Wakatsuki uh, died, unfortunately, uh, in the summer of 1992, so he didn't have a chance to, uh, to hear the case. And Chief Justice Lum recused himself because he had some prior involvement in it. And so what that meant was that of the five Supreme Court justices who ordinarily would hear it, only two uh, were in a position to. And that was then Associate Justice Ron Moon and me. And uh, th the three other members of the panel that heard the appeal were Chief Judge James Burns of the Intermediate Court of Appeals and Associate Judge Walter Heen and uh, retired Justice Yoshimi Hayashi, whose desk I was by that time sitting in and who had not yet reached the age of 70 so he could be called back on a temporary basis mm -hmm. to hear these things. And um, in, in those days, e each uh, chamber, each, each uh, justice would have one of his or her law clerks um, work the appeal up and, and uh, provide a bench memorandum laying out the issues, doing some legal analysis. Um, the justice, justices uh, each read their respective bench memos, reviewed the record, um, and uh, it seemed to me, uh, on the basis of uh, what was before me, that the plaintiffs had a point here. And uh, we, we had oral argument. Uh, uh, there was then a conference uh, that followed oral argument uh, among the judges among the judges and what emerged was that there seemed to be a preponderant view that a mistake of some kind had been made in the circuit court um, I, I, I think it, it's not a coincidence that 
the the court was turning over and changing in, in its personnel at that time. Um, the new justices were younger. Um, Ron Moon became the, the chief justice before the appeal was finally, before the decisions were finally filed. Um, and uh, by the time the, the decisions were filed, the average age uh, on the Hawaii Supreme Court had fallen from 65 to 45. And I think there may have been um, a generational difference in the way uh, information was processed and with respect to worldview and, and regarding um, a willingness to take a position that had never been taken before if the law required it. You wrote the opinion. Well, I, I was the named author of the lead decision, but there was obviously input mm -hmm. uh, from, from C.J. Moon by the time the opinions were filed um, because he had, to, he had to buy in. Uh, and so it, it was a collaborative process. Remarkable. And to have you here now, almost 20 years later, talking about it, what a thrill. Alan, are you thrilled? Because I am. Well, I am really thrilled. Yeah. But, you know, I th you know the, the listeners may not understand, though, despite this wonderful ruling, we still don't have marriage equality in Hawaii. That's true. Could you address that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, <please>. What happened? <laughs> I mean, I know what happened, but I don't know if other people know. Well, um, a couple of uh, big things happened uh, following the decisions. I mean, I was fairly naive. I simply assumed that uh, even though this was something quite new, um, people would accept it. You know, oh, that's the law, all right. The Supreme Court. And, and we would move forward from there. Um, but uh, Congress, for one, the United States Congress, uh, became quite agitated um, so that in 1996, uh, Congress overwhelmingly passed the Defense of Marriage Act and the legislative history, the committee reports explaining uh, that law were very clear that the law was a direct response to Bear v. Lewin because for the first time there was a possibility of same-sex marriage somewhere in the United States uh, and Congress wanted to nip that in the bud. Uh, and so the law basically said two things. One, it said that if, if states want to engage in this kind of experimentation, be it known that there is no federal recognition of same-sex marriage. Um, and, this, and secondly, if state A uh, chooses to uh, open access to marriage up to same-sex couples, be it known that states B, C, D, and E are not required to recognize that marriage as, as lawful or valid. Isn't that a violation of the uh, full faith and credit clause? Well, that question has never made its way to the United States Supreme Court. I'm not even certain that that issue has been litigated because that would require um, couples or, or, or parties that, who had standing to, to challenge uh, the law on that basis, and, and it's hard to get it's there. It's hard to get there, but the other part has been challenged uh, in, in four different federal courts. I think uh, the the part of of DOMA or the Defense of Marriage Act that uh, withholds federal recognition of same sex marriages, and four um, United States courts of appeal have ruled that that part of the Defense of Marriage Act is unconstitutional. And all four of those are waiting f uh, in the United States Supreme Court for a determination which apparently is going to come within a week or two. Oh, no kidding. As to we should put this over for a week or two. <laughs> as to whether the United States Supreme Court will give further review to, to uh -huh. any of those. Sir. And, I, and I think it's likely that the court will take uh, certiorari in one or more of, of those four matters. So that's a question that will probably be decided within the next year. Oh, well, we've got to follow that. Um, and I want to I want to talk about uh, you know the, the well there's there there was one other major um, piece of fallout from the Bear v. Lewin decision and and that was uh, 
an amendment to the Hawaii Constitution. In We're going to cover that right after this break. So if you want to find out, ladies and gentlemen, what that amendment said and, and how it affected Bear versus Lewin, wait one minute. We'll be right back after this break. This is Think Tank broadcasting live on new laws in same-sex marriage. We'll be right back. You're listening to Think Tech Friday, part of the Think Tech radio series on AM 760 KGU. Now here once again is your host, Jay Fidel. Glad to be back. We're here. We're live. We're Think Tech. We're talking with retired Justice Stephen Levinson and Alan Spector, uh, who was a co-founder, a past co-chair of Equality Hawaii, which is a same-sex marriage advocacy group. And he is a participant and advocate in same-sex marriage. And we're talking about the new laws in same-sex marriage. And we're, we're tracking, before the break, we're tracking on Bear versus Lewin and how, how it cast a long shadow. It was, in essence, the shot heard around the world. And we have the, the fellow who authored that opinion right here at this table, uh, Justice Stephen Levinson. So you were talking before the, uh, the break about how Hawaii reacted to the case. Well, as I said, um, by virtue of our decision in 1993, uh, the court sent um, the matter back to the trial court. And uh, a trial was conducted in 1996. As I said, the parties basically agreed as to the facts, and then there was a battle of the experts as to whether the state had a compelling interest in the sex discrimination. And essentially, the state's own w expert witnesses caved and acknowledged that uh, um, there was no compelling that interest. the research didn't indicate that same-sex couples were any less effective as parents child rearers as uh, a traditional mother and father were in an Ozzie and Harriet type uh, nuclear family. And, and that's universal. Those studies have been made all over the world and they always come yeah, to that at, at, the, at the time, the, the research I don't think was as extensive as it is now. Yeah. Um, but the subsequent research has simply reinforced uh, that conclusion. In any event, uh, the the state understandably appealed a second time to the Hawaii Supreme Court uh, from the trial court's judgment. And um, Congress enacted the Defense of Marriage Act in 1996, uh, but uh, there was a lot, of, um, a lot of activity in the Hawaii legislature and, and, uh, and uh, act and, and uh, ferment over whether uh, the Constitution should be amended in effect to overrule what the Hawaii Supreme Court had done. And so in 1998, uh, the Hawaii legislature proposed an amendment to the state's Constitution uh, to be added to the Bill of Rights, which I've always found to be somewhat ironic. Um, and uh, which the electorate in November of 1998 ratified, affirmed um, by a roughly 70 percent to 30 percent majority. Um, the amendment provided that the legislature uh, would have the power to restrict marriage to opposite sex couples. Um, but what that meant was I mean, it, it, it essentially sawed the Supreme Court's equal protection analysis off at the knees. It, it took the case out of, out of equal protection law, but what it gave the legislature was a monopoly over the decision as to how marriage was going to be configured. And so if uh, the legislature could restrict marriage to opposite sex couples, it could also open marriage up to same sex couples. And short of that, it, create, it could create other statuses that, that could be available to same-sex couples. Uh, and so when the Hawaii legislature ultimately uh, passed a civil union bill in 2010 that, that the governor then, uh, or 2011, yeah. The, the 2010 bill was passed, but vetoed by Governor Two Lito. Yeah, passed didn't she veto that bill on the basis that she thought that people ought to decide she did. It's kind of interesting because the people already did decide 
by making that amendment to allow the legislature. Well, in, in, in her veto remarks, among other things, she expressed the view that the electorate didn't really understand what it was voting for mm. when, when it uh, ratified the amendment in 1998, that in her opinion, the electorate believed that it was banning same-sex marriage. Whereas on the face of the amendment, it was that. simply giving the, the legislature a monopoly over the decision. Yeah. So the legislature made a decision in 2010. Governor Lingle vetoed it. Um, the legislature passed a civil union bill again the next year in 2011. So I remember it, it was passed almost immediately on the opening of the legislature. Well, it was passed very, very quickly and went very quickly to uh, newly elected Governor Abercrombie Who signed it? for action, and he signed it into law as Act One. So that was the first bill in the, two, uh, in the year 2011 that he signed into law. Uh, and, and so the legislature was exercising the power that it was expressly given uh, monopolistically in the 1998 amendment. And that was um, 19 years after your case. <laughs> that, was, um, that was 19 years after we heard oral argument, that's right. Mm -hmm. So what's missing now? Because I, I asked you originally, you know, what's the difference, what's the definition between civil union and same-sex same marriage? Um, are we are we complete on this, or is there well, a further it, step? It's a social difference. Uh, civil union is just a package of legal rights, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really come with the social meaning of what marriage is. People grow up, uh, they're socialized, they have a goal, desires to get married someday. People don't go around writing love songs about civil unions, and people don't go, will you civil union me? Uh, Marriage is more than just legal rights. It's, it's, it's a, a social institution. It's a family status. It's a, it's a badge of a, of a maturing relationship. You go through stages. You get married. So we still don't have full marriage in Hawaii. Same-sex couples are still told you can't, by the state legislature you can't get married. And I would, I would say to the listeners, how would you feel if, if your government told you you couldn't marry? If you're a heterosexual person listening, if, you know, you can't marry the person you love. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what Hawaii still says to same-sex couples. Um, even though they have given us expanded rights through the civil union law, it's still, it's still only half a loaf. I interestingly, uh, between 1998, when uh, the marriage amendment was added to the Hawaii Constitution, and 2010 and 11, a lot of the opponents of same-sex marriage took the position that you know, if what you're interested in is access to the rights and benefits that, that flow from marriage, okay. I mean, we can, we can see giving you those rights and benefits, but just don't call it marriage. So the legislature created uh, another status called civil unions, which afforded all of the rights and benefits uh, to partners, uh, uh, to, to civil unions that, that uh, flow to uh, opposite sex married. All, uh, all of them? All, all of them. All, all, the, all that the state is capable of conferring. Not the, not the federal government. But no. by virtue of the Defense of Marriage Act, no federal rights. So you can't file a joint tax That's return right. with the IRS. That's right. Um, and as the legislature was in the process of uh, enacting a civil union law, the same opponents who, who had previously argued, just don't call it marriage, we're now saying, well, that's marriage by another name. <laughs> but it is really marriage by another name, and the fact that it's another name creates the problem that Alan's talking yeah, about. It is because it, it's, name, it's a second-class yeah. status. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the word marriage, what I like to say, and I, I learned this from Evan Wolfson, who's the executive director of Freedom to Marry, the word marriage... Is that a national organization? National organization uh, the word marriage is the currency by which those rights are purchased. You walk into a hospital room and, and there's a, a ward clerk, I mean, a, excuse me, an emergency room, and you say, this is my husband, I'm here to see my wife. Um, you're automatically extended the courtesies and the rights that go with marriage. Most, the average person in Hawaii or anywhere in America that 
is the, are the people that are actually conveying those rights to you. They don't understand what civil union is, but everybody knows what marriage is. So even couples in civil unions have to fight just to get the rights that the civil union law guarantees them because most people aren't walking around with law books. They, you know, when you create a separate status, you can, you're conveying a message to society sure. that it's not marriage it, and it's something lesser and it's something different. So it, it begs, you know, the average person might wonder, well, does a civil union afford this right? I mean, I, I know what a marriage provides, it, it but do I have to word, do that? Yeah. It's a word. Words have a very have meaning. Sure, but a question though, in order to get to total equality, to mm -hmm. equality in concept, social equality, equality in nomenclature, if you like then it would seem to me is that all you have to say in a statute, either by amending the civil union statute or making a new one, is we really meant all, all marriage, all marriage. It's marriage. Civil union equals marriage. This is a one-line bill, isn't it? This is not complicated. Well, well no, we have to allow same-sex couples to actually get married. So they have a marriage license, not okay, a civil okay. union license. And that is something that the legislature in Hawaii can do. Yes. It is their right to do Under it. the amendment? Yeah, the amendment gives them the total right to define marriage. Okay. So they can, and that remains our goal, to see uh, the state of Hawaii pass uh, a marriage bill for same-sex couples. But even if Hawaii did that, we still have to see the, the U.S. Supreme Court or Congress repeal the Defense of Marriage Act. Because even if Hawaii were to pass marriage for same-sex couples, it's, it's still not recognized federally. And if the Defense of Marriage Act is repealed, all we would have is federal recognition of marriages for same-sex couples, not civil union, because civil union oh. doesn't exist in federal law. Very there's, interesting. There's no Very such thing as a civil union in federal law. Federal law only recognizes yeah. marriage. So, so that, would leave, that would leave civil union in the lurch. There would be a vacuum for civil basically, union. Basically, if, if, if DOMA falls, which we hope and are anticipating will happen, Hawaii civil unions would be very, very, you know, very worthless outside of the state of be Hawaii. That would be a big problem. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so who are the constituents in this argument? I'm, I'm going to leave that question pending. It's a very interesting question. I'm awaiting your answers, but for the moment, we're, we're going to take a short break. This is Think Tech. We're talking to retired Justice Stephen Levinson and Alan Spector, uh, who is a co-founder of uh, Equality Hawaii. We're talking about new laws in same-sex marriage. We'll be right back. You're listening to Think Tech Friday, part of the Think Tech radio series on AM 760 KGU. Now here once again is your host, Jay Fidel. We're back. We're live. We're Think Tech. We're with retired Justice uh, Stephen Levinson and Alan Spector, an advocate for same-sex marriage. We're talking about new laws in same-sex marriage. And as we left it before the break, the question is, you know, you have, you have people who have emerged on one side of this question or another, or maybe have been, you know, in the middle, the silent majority, if you will. Um, but how does, how does it break down? Because, uh, because you know, this issue is going to come up again one way or the other. How is it going to break down? Who's going to be on one side of it based on what we know now? Well, you know, there, there are several breakdowns, but of course one has to remember that not everybody conforms. You know, I, I could say to you right now, the vast majority of people under age 30 or 40 are in support, and the majority of people over 70 are opposed. But my parents are well into their 70s and they paid for my marriage so you know just want to be mindful of that but i would i would say that you know overall younger people are more supportive of, of marriage equality democrats consistently are more supportive uh, uh, majority support when you look at uh, religious breakdowns uh, you'll see that uh, the jewish community is majority in support um, and surprisingly, people often assume that Catholics will be, you know, majority opposed. But the polls just prove that wrong. The, the second high, I believe, the second highest uh, group of, of, of support from religious communities comes from Catholics. How about the religious right, as we well, you know, saw the, in the, the election? Folk, the folks the that are more on the on the oppo opposing side are, in general, Republicans. 
uh, and folks of more conservative religious traditions, you know, as, as people would call, say the religious right, um, you know, many of the uh, more conservative evangelical churches, uh, the Mormon church, and you know, officially the Catholic church, although um, again, those numbers, don't always, it doesn't always play out in real, reality in terms of the, the Catholic masses. Mm -hmm. And then among Protestants, kind of divided between you know the more liberal mainline Protestant uh, denominations like Episcopalian are more in support. And there uh, are some churches that are happy to perform oh yeah, same-sex there, marriages. There's many, many religious communities uh, that are in support and, and allow their clergy to perform marriages. Oh, and I also forgot Buddhist. They were very supportive of us. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, Honpa Hongwanji passed a resolution a few years ago in full support. Um, the Japanese community here in Hawaii has been very, very supportive of this issue, um, has been a big advocate and coalition partner for Equality Hawaii. Uh, the other thing it's important to know is that we're not really talking about religion here. Um, you know, it is true that marriage can be a religious institution, but we're really talking about the legal civil institution of marriage. People don't have to have a priest or a rabbi or, or a, a minister to get married. You can get married by a judge. I mean, Justice Levinson can marry you. There's no religious requirement that you have to believe in God or be part of any religion to get married mm -hmm. anywhere in this country. So, um, uh, you know, one of the things the, uh, the opponents are continuously claiming, and it's really a false argument, is that this is a violation of their religious freedom. But the reality is, is that they're able to marry who they want, and they're able to refuse to marry who they, you know, they can refuse anyone. No state government can force any religious denomination to marry people that they don't want to. They can't force the Catholic Church to marry people that were divorced. Sometime we have to have a show about the Establishment Clause. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you know, two or three. <laughs> you know, and the other, the other thing that is a very interesting is that the, the same right, more conservative or right-wing religious uh, denominations that um, are opposed to this, um, they allow uh, for civil divorces. You know, they, they're not trying to ban divorce in this country. I'm sure they would like it, but nobody would ever think about banning divorce in America because maybe the Catholic Church doesn't believe in, in divorce. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I've yet to see here in Hawaii a ban on the sale of pork because that's a violation of the rules of uh, kosher for Orthodox Judaism. We don't, you know, we don't see the Orthodox Jewish community trying to ban the sale of pork in the country because it's a violation of traditional Jewish law, but yet conservative right-wing Christians um, feel they can impose their conservative religious beliefs on the rest of us. Well, that's the, that's the distinction that uh, Joe Biden made in the debates a few weeks ago. He said, I'm a Catholic, I have, I, and I follow the Catholic precepts, and, and I live a Catholic life, but I don't try to impose that on anybody else. And it's the question of imposition, I think, what you're talking about. Um, so you can and, take- And the late Governor John Burns uh, took precisely that position. Mm -hmm with respect to availability of abortion. Yeah, he was a Catholic. He was a Catholic and he was a devoutly practicing Catholic and he believed what he believed, but he made clear that he wasn't going to impose his belief system on other people. Yeah, so that's the question for the new well, generation. Well, and, and, a, and a question for the current opponents, a question that they've never been able to answer is, for example, how does my legal marriage to my husband impact their marriage? It doesn't. And they, they, they are unable to answer that question because I, I am legally married. I was married outside of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. and, uh, May I ask where? Uh, in Ontario, Canada. Canada. All through Canada you can get married, mm -hmm. same-sex marriage. Yes. And that's what people are doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Too bad that you have to travel to do it, though. Oh, it was easy for me. I was living on the Canadian border <laughs> in New York. <laughs> it was just a 30-minute ride in the car. Okay. Take a, take a now he wouldn't have... Yeah. If you were getting married now, he wouldn't have had to travel to Canada. No, I would have not got, when I got married at that time, it was New York law that if, if while New York didn't yet have full marriage for same-sex couples, they would recognize it if you got married elsewhere. So uh -huh. a, lot of, a lot of gay couples in New York were marrying in Canada at the time. So, you know, for the final point of discussion, gentlemen, I would like to ask you what you think is going to happen here on a, you know, to predict, to examine trends and see changes. Um, how is the world going to change on this issue? How has Hawaii, how has the, you know, the, the, the 
the you know continental United States and and the federal government for that matter. How is the world going to change? How do you see this moving forward? We have a couple three minutes. Yeah. Well, I'd be interested in your answers. I think the November sixth election I think is is pretty made it pretty clear where the world is heading. Uh, Barack Obama came out in full support of marriage for same sex couples and he won his election. We saw three states pass full marriage equality at the ballot box. I think it's pretty clear now that society has changed, that the tide has turned, the majority of the public supports marriage equality, even here locally. If you look at the elections in Hawaii over the past year or so, who are the losers? People that have been against us. Linda Lingle, lost. Mufi Hahnemann, lost. Charles DeJou, lost. Um, I, I could keep going on and on and on. Uh, but society has changed and uh, I absolutely firmly believe that before this decade is out this this issue will be resolved and I, I'm pretty confident in the next uh, you know one to three years we'll see a number of new states passing uh, full marriage for same-sex couples and hopefully we'll see um, marriage return to California soon uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see the Defense of Marriage Act repealed. So I think it's, I think it's, it's the, the future is, is pretty clear. I think like uh, so many social norms um, that evolve, uh, demystification is key. <clears throat> Same-sex marriage was a fairly novel notion 20 or 25 years ago. Now it's not. Uh, and uh, what seemed very unlikely 25 years ago, um, that is that same-sex marriage would ever be recognized anywhere, uh, is, is, seems like quaint ancient history. Ten states, the District of Columbia, 11 other countries around the world. Um, this, is, uh, this is a norm that is, that is evolving and it's going to spread. You seem so professional on the issue, but I want to ask you one last question. How do you feel about being the shot heard around the world? I mean, if it was me, I would, I'd be walking tall every day. How, how do you feel about it? I, I feel lucky. Yeah. It, 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 I was in the right place at the right time, and uh, um, if, I don't, if, I'm, if I'm not uh, instrumental in anything important, uh, from today until the day I die, I'll be quite uh, content with what I was lucky enough to be a part of. It's wonderful to know you, Steve. It really is. You've done wonderful things. Thank you. <laughs> Steve Levinson and uh, Alan Spector, thank you so much for joining us in this discussion of the new laws in same-sex marriages uh, here on ThinkTech. Um, we'll be back on uh, next Wednesday uh, to discuss bicycling, the Red Hot Ladies they're going to be telling us what, why, they, why they cycle in Hawaii and how, what that means to our community. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. Aloha. Everyone have a nice weekend.